Good morning and welcome to Eurostar Webinar Week. Our third webinar is presented by A.G. Balamura Gadez and he will speak about weekend testing. My name is Miriam and I will be moderating this webinar. Today's webinar will last approximately 25 minutes with time for questions at the end. If you want to ask a question, use the Q&A button on your live meeting toolbar or press Alt and Q on your keyboard. This webinar will also be recorded and will be available in our webinar archive shortly. When tweeting about this webinar, please make sure you use the hashtag ESConf so we can find and answer any questions you may have. So now I will hand you over to AJ and we can get started on today's topic. Good morning, AJ. Good morning, Eurostar delegates. This webinar uh, is titled The Joy of Facilitating Weekend Testing, and I am Ajay Balamurgadas, one of the co-founders of Weekend testing, along with uh, Parimala Shankaraya, Sharad Bairagoda, and Anuj Nair. So, first things first. Let's take a poll. Yeah. How many of you have uh, participated in any weekend testing sessions? Cool. Can we give some 10 more seconds? Okay, yeah, so the results are up. It says 41% yes, 41% no, 16% say what is weekend testing, right, good. So let's start. So weekend testing was started in uh, August 2009. This we started as to improve our uh, testing skills, we wanted uh, a platform to practice, sharpen our testing skills. So as you all might have known, we have crossed around more than 100 testing sessions and we have chapters all over the world now. We have chapters in Asia, we have in Europe. This year uh, in January or Feb, early Feb, we had a chapter in uh, week in America. Then we have this weeknight testing as well. Tonight we have a weeknight testing session. So let's see what happens behind the scenes of a weekend testing session. So here we have a, a mind map. I, I said, okay, a mind map is one of the you know, good ways to represent a lot of ideas. So I said, okay, one of the tested tools in uh, Weekend testing, Mind Mister. I use that. And uh, this one is from the Free Mind, the first tool used in uh, weekend testing, the first session. So let me start with on the items on the right hand side the announcement, registrations, queries. So the first, any anytime we want to conduct a weekend testing session, which happens usually on Saturdays and Sundays for say for two hours, we announce about the session through the weekend testing website, we advertise through the Twitter, Skype, and the emails. Thanks to Dr. Kem Kaner, now we announce the sessions on weekend testing through the software testing Yahoo group as well. And then we do receive a lot of registrations testers register two, three days in advance by sending email. Then we add them as contacts on Skype. And then we do, uh, that's real funny, you know. Sometimes testers are so eager, in the last minute plan changes and they want to attend the sessions, right? So we do add the last minute registrations. We are not strict. Um, we are always, you know, welcome to help testers practice their testing skills, even we learn from uh, testers, right? Then we do have uh, queries as to, okay, how do I install the software or what time? Because sometimes people, you know, it's tough. People get confused between the time zones. We do have uh, experiences where people have turned up one hour later or one hour early, right? That happens. So we are always online. We do provide uh, you know, the quick reply as soon as possible to the queries. 
then the facilitator then before conducting a session he has to go through the different software he has to decide okay which software shall i use for this session what would be the installer size how much time it would take to download then he has to contact the programmer if it is uh, not an open source software he has to take the permission of the programmer the management or the product management shall i publish the bug reports are you okay with we can testing testing the software and then he also has to do a smoke test right or something like okay does it crash on the first instance am i able to install the software is it a mac specific software is it a no is independent what if some tester comes up with mac or mac operating system macintosh so what does he do if the software is not supported what uh, so there are a lot of questions so he so the facilitator has to you know take care of these uh, details of the software and then he has to decide about the mission as well as the weekend testing is for 2 hours the first session first 1 hour is of a testing session where the testers work towards uh, fulfilling the mission and the next hour is the discussion session or the debrief session as it is commonly known so the facilitator has to decide the mission is is the mission provided by the program as some programmers do provide us saying okay we want to we want you to find bugs on this particular module alone right or they say okay can you please compare this checklist most commonly used checklist and uh, test our website so the programmer provides the mission sometimes and sometimes we do have guest facilitators we have had uh, guest facilitators like uh, john bark dr kem kena himself then pradeep soundrajan and uh, many more many more uh, guest facilitators right so the guest facilitator guest facilitator do have uh, their own ideas they want to share they want to test so the facilitator has to or the facilitator in the sense the one who runs the weekend testing session so he has to you know um announce the mission set by the guest facilitator and then most interesting part is that we do set some minor traps something back like, okay we will not provide who is the customer we will not provide details about the customer nor about the mission we'll see okay do the testers ask for the details or do they fall into the trap and start testing many a times we have seen that testers don't ask so many questions right as soon as the software uh, installation link is provided they download they install they run the you know they test and then we said okay were you aware that the mission was to test the installation and not what you tested then they say oh yeah i never questioned and then said oh that was a trap and some testers do ask questions keep asking questions in the last minute sometimes it's good to good to question at the same time we need to take care of the cost versus value right so the facilitator puts in some minor traps and then he does provide the resources for some sessions there needs to be some prerequisites like from from some software requires the dotnet framework or some requires uh, some other tools like it's there's a session on uh, mind mapping or analyzing the specifications and using some mind mapping tools it is better to have a mind map tool installed rather than the tester comes to the session and then the facilitator says oh you don't have a mind mapping tool please install no we don't waste time we take care of the cost versus value and then once the mission is announced we have the testing session usually uh, in different chapters the testing session few have the introduction few don't have the introduction session few directly jump into the testing session and few you know start with the introduction ses- session saying okay please tell about yourself what is your experience and stuff like that to to make the testers comfortable and then the pr- mission is provided then we do you know the facilitators don't test that's the best part the facilitators don't test and they are there for assistance we don't moderate we facilitate the session then we uh, if say two testers are stuck and they don't know what to do how to progress 
we assist them, give them clues like how about pairing, how about doing a pair test with uh, so and so, or we pair with the tester and uh, you know give them test ideas, encourage them, and then as time is constantly running, we have to keep track of the time as well, right? So sometimes you get so involved in testing or facilitating or you know. Uh, in a good discussion on testing, that we forget that it's a two hours discussion, right? So we take care of that because some testers join uh, sessions at their uh, in the evening time, so we need to take care of the time factor also because it's late night, midnight at some places, and it's quite early some other places. So it's the duty of the facilitator to keep track of the time. And once the testing session is over. And uh, one more funny instant. So many times, testers don't respond to the facilitator's call The time is up. They want to test more. They always have this complaint. So less time, right? Typical of testers. They always need more time to test. Okay. So after keeping track of time, and then we say, okay, please stop. This is the end of testing session. Let's get back to discussion session or the debrief session. There the facilitator in the background thinks each of the testers saying, okay, will you go first? Are you okay going after ABC? Right? So we decide the order. We try to encourage the first timers or those who are shy. So we encourage them. We ask them a few questions. Okay, how was it? How was the experience? These are not scripted, mind you. These questions are not scripted, right? This depends on the session. Some testers, if they're not able to, you know, even install, then we say, okay, what did you do if you were not able to install? Did you inform the facilitator? Did you take help of other testers? Or is this a machine-specific issue? We try to, you know, help them or get to the root cause or you know, encourage them to talk more. So that so it's it's interesting that every testing session has, we can tell two stories, say at least two stories. One, the story about the product, what we tested, how was it, and one story about the testing story, right? So we encourage testers to tell both the stories, the product story as well as the testing story. Then uh, we, acknowledge, we acknowledge their story. It's very important, right? Testers spend uh, one hour they expect, okay, at least an appreciation of the good work they did, at least some suggestions on where they missed, what they did not take care of, right? So facilitators uh, patiently listen to the, the points, discussion, then facilitate the entire discussion. Most important, when um, these sessions happen, the, I mean, the testing sessions, sometimes uh, we tend to go, you know, out of the way, wayward discussions happen like, okay, no, no, this is not possible. Something which is totally unrelated to the mission. People start discussing and there's a heated discussion. Then the facilitator has to take care that, no, no, okay, friends, let's focus on the session. You know, keeping track of the time. And then finally, then we, we need to make sure that everyone gets a chance to speak, right? There's no point in having 10 testers, 15 testers, and only three or four speaking about their experiences, right? So we try to, you know, give a fair chance to everyone to discuss their story, to discuss their experiences, and we learn from their experiences too. I mean, the facilitators, the other testers. Well, then suppose, uh, say, Darren McMillan is an expert on mind mapping, according to me. So if he comes to a session and he says, okay, this particular mind mapping tool is better. I have tried these three, and I feel mind mister is the best. Then it's good, you know. It's good to listen to others. It's good to um, learn from others' experiences, and that's what we do in the discussion session. Share resources, and finally, we do need to highlight the traps, right? So once the discussion session is done, we move on to the experience reports. The facilitator. Uh, the facilitator makes sure that, okay, all the test reports are received, all the testers have submitted their test reports, and then he consolidates, and then posts it on the website, weekendtesting.com, right? And then 
the sessions where the programmers or the guest facilitators required uh, a particular document or a test report, we consult it and send uh, the report along with the names of the testers. And we do publish on the weekend testing website, right? So this is a brief overview of the weekend testing session. So coming to strange experiences. Imagine you are in a testing session. You give a mission to the testers. There are, say, 12 testers testing. So the time is like, OK, start. We start now. And uh, everyone asks, what's the mission? You provide a mission. OK, test this for this particular quality criteria. Or find this, find the solution to this puzzle. Within two, three minutes, a tester shouts, yes, here's the answer. If you want, you can check it. What do you do? The testing session is supposed to be a one-hour session. Right? And the mission is achieved in flat five minutes. What do you do? It happened. It happened in weekend testing session number 16, one six. Right? Mission was achieved in five minutes. And I was the facilitator. And I thought, OK, great. Here is the second mission. Right? I said, OK, mission one accomplished. Great. Fantastic. Take mission two. After half an hour, mission two was accomplished. I said, OK, cool. Here is the mission three. Right? That's the way you engage testers for an hour, because some testers could not meet the mission one even at the, uh, say, 45th minute. So what do you do? You can't leave them behind. Or you can't, you know, say, okay, the session is over as uh, Mr. X, Y, Z, or, you know, uh, completed the mission in five minutes, we end the session. No. You have to take care that you have to engage all the testers, those who completed the mission early, those who are struggling to meet the mission, those who are learning, first timers. Right? So you have to encourage everyone, and that's what happened in WT16. Then um, Entangle, great product. We tested Entangle, Entangle.com. Instead of testing on the staging server, we tested directly on the production server. And after 10 minutes of testing, Mohinder Kosla, he said, there's something fishy here. Right? You guys are testing on some other site. I'm testing. Your data is not visible to me. My data is not visible to you. Then when we cross-checked, we realized that it was on, we tested on a production site, right? So that was uh, strange. And uh, we had to, you know, delete the test data. We had to inform Elizabeth, and the test data was removed from the production server. And in one of the sessions where John Bach was present, an uh, unwanted guest, he, he arrived. We added, okay, he's a tester, maybe. We added, and then he started abusing all of us. We had to, you know, uh, remove him from the session. And then, this is interesting, type the message to the wrong person. Usually in the background, uh, if there are more than, say, 10 to 12 testers, or say 20 testers, we usually go in with two facilitators. So myself and Parimala Shankaraya, author of Curious Tester blog, we're facilitating, and we were discussing in the background, okay, testers are busy, uh, let's give them this resource and all that stuff. And uh, the, first, the guest facilitator was John Buck. Instead of typing to Parimala, I directly typed a message, Skype message to John in the room, uh, in the group chat where Parimala, John, and myself were there. I typed directly there instead of typing in the private chat between uh, myself and Parimala. So it happens, right? The message intended to Parimala was typed to who? Was directed to John. Right? Then sometimes power cut. You, know, so you don't have a control sometimes. So you are in between a session, power cuts, and people are expecting response from the facilitator. So one of the alternatives is I log on using my mobile phone, and I log on using the computer as well. And whenever, you know, computer power cuts, I, I reply using the mobile phone. So we make sure that the testers don't know this. And sometimes I had to, a uh, few facilitators like Parimala and myself had to run from one, uh, from, the, from the house to the, what, cafe booth, I mean, the internet cafe, you know, cyber cafe to uh, log into the session as facilitators and continue. Right? Simultaneously power cut at both the places. What do you do? No backup, right? So, yeah, these are some of the strange experiences we had. And uh, so what some people do ask, okay, you don't test, you are the facilitator, what is your takeaway? Do you learn anything? Oh, man, now I'd be 
dying if I say I don't learn anything. There's so much to learn. Facilitation is a skill, I can say that. Time management. You have to answer queries. You have to make sure that the software is running. Uh, some people paying on Gmail, some people paying on Skype, some on Twitter, some call you. You have to add everyone on Skype and you have to make sure that you are answering queries on Skype who for the testers who have joined in time and the late registrants. So you know, and you know, okay, you get to know what task you need to uh, you need to work on and uh, how to manage time, all that stuff. That's fantastic time management, quick thinking. As I said, vision is achieved in five minutes. What do you do? You say, okay, that is the mission, or you provide, oh, okay, cool, great. Here's the second mission, right? And test ideas. Sometimes you learn so many test ideas by being just a facilitator. You, you get to know how the testers think. Then you ping the testers in private asking, okay, is everything okay? Are you stuck at something? And then you provide some resource, and then they say, oh, cool. So I think here is one more resource. I'm thinking on these lines. So you get to know our thought process of different testers. You learn new test ideas, and this is fantastic exposure to multiple software. In the session, we have one software, but as a facilitator, you need to test at least two to three softwares to zero in on one software, right? The testers see one software, the final software, but as a, as a facilitator, uh, he or she has to test multiple software. Okay, is this software too complex? Is this software, the installer size is too big? The installer size is, uh, does it work on OS? Or is it OS independent or is it specific to Linux, right? And then this is the best part. You gain new friends, right? Uh, so many uh, friends now have made through weekend testing and we constantly share knowledge. So that I say is the biggest takeaway as facilitator. You're always learning. And uh, yeah, that's it. And if you have any questions, please feel free. And uh, we do have uh, the details. If you, have, if you want to participate in uh, the weekend testing in uh, Asia, you can log on to or you can send an email to weekendtesting at gmail.com. Skype and Twitter ID is Weekend Testing. The same with Europe Chapter, America Chapter, Europe Testers, Weekend Testers, Americas. And then we do have the Weeknight Testing, right? So Weeknight Testing, the Skype ID is Weeknight Testing. No space in between, right? Yeah. So any questions, please? You know, I have some questions. Okay, so here's a question. Where do you find the time to facilitate all of this along with a full-time testing role? Oh, good. Um, the co-founders, everyone works on uh, weekdays. That's Monday to Friday. And then Saturday, to Saturday Sunday is free. So as it is a two-hour session and the background tasks take two hours, so it's easy to get uh, four hours and 48 hours, right? And uh, it's, again, the cost versus value. We know the investment, four hours, it gives a lot in terms of testing ideas, testing values. So that's the reason. I mean, weekends, we do get time. And I have one more question. How do you decide which products will be tested in WT sessions? And uh, this is by... Rimvida Spetkus. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce it correctly. How do you decide which products will be tested in WT sessions? One, it depends on the programmer. We do, uh, suppose, this weekend we have the weekend testing 60 session. We have already sent emails to few programmers asking, would you like your product to be tested? And, uh, we also check in the sourceforge.net, sf.net, and so many new tools, new products are being discussed on Twitter. We pick one of them. We, the parameters which decide whether this product will get into a weekend testing session or not are the installer size, the complexity, the learnability of the software, how easy it is to learn or, you know, or or as independent or something, and it finally depends on the facilitator, guest facilitator or the programmer, right? 
and I have one more question. Have you found any strange bugs or defects during the sessions? Um, strange bugs, yes. Sometimes, uh, I think in the most of the, I don't want to name the company, if you find through the, if you browse through the discussion sessions or the reports on weekend testing website, I think you'll find a lot of uh, bugs which, you know, which would embarrass the pro uh, product owners. Yes, we have found that we can discuss this in private. I don't want to miss the bugs. Yes. Any more questions, please? Thank you very much, AJ. That was a brilliant presentation. Great. Thanks, Maria. Twitter is very busy with comments for you, so uh, you'll be busy looking at those afterwards. Oh, okay, yeah, and uh, thanks a lot for attending this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, as well. Um, we also have one more webinar taking place tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. CET, and that webinar is with Fran O'Hara, and Fran is going to be speaking about Agile Test Management, and you can still register for this webinar by visiting our website. So if you have any more questions for AJ, you can ask those to him on Twitter, or you can email um, Miriam at eurostarconferences.com. If you are interested in submitting an article for our blog or a newsletter, you can also contact me, Miriam, at eurostarconferences.com. That's M-I-R-I-A-M. Finally, I'd like to remind you all that this webinar has been recorded, and we will email you once it is available in the Eurostar webinar archive. Thank you for listening. This webinar has now ended.